I am not one to produce BuzzFeed cringe compilation type videos. If you watch my content, I don't normally do this. A lot of people do, not me. I normally don't even comment on videos themselves, but I have to do this. I'm sorry. This is by far the worst thing I have ever seen come out of BuzzFeed, specifically BuzzFeed News. And I will also say, I'm, I mean this sincerely. I'm not trying to be directly disrespectful or drag the reporter here, Ryan Broderick, who I've talked to on several occasions on Twitter. I normally don't like what's called punching down. I, re- re- uh, I reserve my criticism and commentary typically for higher tier individuals, public figures, high profile journalists. I've made several videos where I've talked about Brian Stelter, for instance. He's the host of a CNN show. His face is on billboards. They get a ton of viewers. They have a ton of influence. I say a ton relatively, but he's a high profile guy, right? And he has influence. This dude, not so much. I'm not trying to be mean. However, this is some of the worst and cringiest, possibly as a journalist, the cringiest thing I have ever seen. First, it is a video published yesterday on a YouTube channel with 800,000 subscribers, and it got 5,000 vid- 5, views. I have no idea whose idea this was, but it was a terrible idea. It's on the front page of BuzzFeed News right now. I saw it and I was like, oh no. I watched it and I, I laughed a lot. First of all, the title is, I was pepper sprayed by police reporting on a Boston straight pride parade. Okay, that happened like four months ago. <laughs> Why are you talking about it now? Sure, I guess the story of being pepper sprayed might seem like it's interesting. It clearly isn't. Uh, Another thing too, explaining how you got pepper sprayed and showing a photo of your face as a reporter. I'll tell you what, this video is an example of a, of a complete desperation from Buzzfeed to produce something. Maybe they're experimenting fine, but I'll tell you this. What this video shows is really just a reporter who has no idea what they're doing. And again, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's true. You you got pepper sprayed. You know what? (laughs) How about, how about I made a video titled, I was pushed up against a wall with a Molotov cocktail held to my face while people screamed at me in a different language. How about I was detained in, in a windowless room by, by secret police in Brazil. We tie you pepper sprayed? I'm sorry. I heard this and I laughed because when you go out to a protest in America and you get pepper sprayed, so what? Welcome to reporting on these things. And if you're gonna take a picture of yourself, like, oh no, I was pepper sprayed. Like, dude, are you kidding me? You didn't bring goggles with you? What are you, what are you doing? This is, a, this is a video about BuzzFeed's complete ineptitude. And they even go on to compare the Boston Straight Pride event, a regular protest, because I've been to so many. He, the dude actually says, this could have been Charlottesville. I kid you not. Okay. All right. We're gonna play this video. Uh, let's play. My name is Ryan Broderick, and I was pepper sprayed by police while covering a straight pride parade. Uh, Last August, I was sent to Boston, Massachusetts to report on a pro-Trump, far-right, straight pride parade. And I was there looking at the way that white nationalists and Trump supporters are manipulating smaller cities into falling for elaborate stunts and pranks meant to sow division and rile people up. The morning of the parade was a mess. So I'll, I'll stop here and I'll say, to an extent, yes, right? They're, they're absolutely right-wing personalities. They're putting on these events. They're somewhat ironic events. And there's an intent of, you know, getting people angry. I would say that when it comes to the phrase, it's okay to be white or a straight pride event, they're trying to do something that's on the surface innocuous to rile up a violent response in an ever-increasing manner. So basically, the idea kind of, for, not, not for everybody, some people might view it differently, but It's basically like this. If you put on an event that's like a free speech rally and then people come and protest because there's right wingers there, he says far right, I I, I will contest that in a second. Then, you know, people say, oh, look, there's fights in the street. There's a goal kind of to create ever more innocuous and ironic events. So eventually people are protesting something that you're like, what? Why are they? Why are they protesting that? That's kind of weird. So at the straight pride event, they tried framing it like a positive thing where they're saying we're not against anybody. And they actually had Milo Yiannopoulos, who is gay, as their like main dude. Why BuzzFeed is doing a video about something that happened four months ago, I have no idea. And why is it relevant that you got pepper sprayed? Why weren't you wearing goggles? That's protest 101. Anyway, let's read. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's watch. Simply put, the organizers clearly 
weren't really sure what was going on. About an hour into the pre-parade organization, Milo Yiannopoulos showed up, the famous far-right influencer. The counter-protesters were all assembling on the sides of the road. Things were really tense from the minute it started around 10 a.m. Uh, there were a few other reporters there. I was largely by myself, and when you're covering an event like that, the main goal is to figure out what's going on, how it's gonna progress, and you sort of just have to follow the action and try to stay safe. And I want to understand why the people who showed up for this parade actually were there. All right, first, calling Mylianopolis far right. I completely disagree with this. There's, there's a, some, some, what you got to understand about left and right, okay? So there's the cultural left and right and the economic left and right, and they're often conflated. When people say far right, they're typically referring to the cultural, meaning you've got people who are very pro-traditional marriage, maybe pro-religion. When people say left, they kind of refer to both. So it's really weird. First, Milo Yiannopoulos is not far right. Milo Yiannopoulos is in an interracial relationship and he is gay. That is not traditional by any stretch of the imagination. He is also not a laissez-faire capitalist. He is a conservative, so you could probably call him right wing, but far right doesn't apply in any sense of the understanding of what far right means other than BuzzFeed's weird colloquial framing of far right. Now, when we call people like BuzzFeed far left, it actually makes sense because many people who hold far left cultural beliefs, that is opposing tradition, great leap forward kind of ideas where they say no traditional marriage, yes to LGBT rights, very progressive ideas, that is far left culturally. They also tend to be very socialist and support many of these socialist you know, individuals. So far left does make sense. I'm not talking about in terms of reference to like what America is currently. I mean, literally on the political compass, you'd put someone like Milo Yiannopoulos, probably center right libertarian. Now, of course, that's going to spark a major outrage because Milo Yiannopoulos is a bit of a pro provocateur, but you can't claim Milo is traditional in any sense of the imagination other than he has re resisted some of like, you know, trans issues and stuff like that. So sure, he's moderately right wing. So I would refer to him as such. Far left makes more sense. Clearly, BuzzFeed's perspective, more aligned with the far left, they see the right wing as very, very far right to them, so you can see their bias. Let's watch, watch on. Excuse me. The parade was essentially a far right rogues gallery of internet nonsense, right? Like you had Pepe the Frog cosplayers, you had Proud Boys, you had a Trump 2020 float. It was a complete circus. I definitely had this feeling of like, wow, okay, yeah, things are probably going to kick off and I'm not sure which direction they're going to kick off from, right? I didn't know if it was going to be the far right that was going to start causing trouble first or the anti-fascists who might jump the barricade into the parade or the police who might just start swinging wildly. And in a moment like that, you're just trying to be as aware of everything as possible as you can so you don't get surprised in the wrong. First of all, he's now showing his complete inexperience with these events. Going back a decade, I can tell you almost every single journalist knows the greater threat is from Antifa. Now, left wing and far left reporters will deny this. They'll lie about it. But typically when you see like militiamen and like far right individuals, they try to game the press. I will give you like, listen, it's, it's, it's plainly obvious. We know how this works. Even they have talked about how, you know, the far right, like the literal far right, will try dressing up in suits to play to the cameras, to feign being the victim. But then when it comes to these events, it's like, I don't, I don't know who would have started it. Maybe the far right. No, 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 no. Full stop, dude. Yes, sometimes, 100% in Berkeley. I watched a dude, he was a white nationalist with a balaclava on, jump the barricade and clock some Antifa person in the face. It's, it's you know, you're going you're to get a lot of uh, contentious debate in this. Basically what happened in Berkeley was, there was a barricade set up by police and Antifa pulled it down, jumped over it and got in the face of some people. Dude put on a balaclava, clocked someone. The first strike came from, from the far right in that regard. I do think it's unfair to combine these white nationalist types and regular Trump supporters based on like Milo being interracially gay married and Jewish. They clearly don't like guys like that. So there's not a, a, a straight connection. However, when these people show up at the balaclavas, where were the Trump supporters to be like GTFO? And they were holding signs, man. So listen, it is a fact. Antifa is substantially more likely to initiate the conflict. 
And Trump supporters have been doing a better job, in my opinion. We've seen what they've done to the people in Congress. Like Steve King, he says something dumb. They're like, GTFO. They don't do the same for the left. The right is willing to put their foot down and start calling out people. You've got that weird, like, groiper war thing going on where you've got, you know, Nick Fuentes versus, like, talking Turning Point USA and another conservative groups in the Daily Wire. So, yeah, the right is absolutely willing to go to conflict with people they, they disagree with, whereas the left, just like, when I was in Boston, there were people waving Soviet flags and, and the DSA was there like, we don't, we don't support that, but we're not going to do anything about it. Then criticizing the right for having a guy waving a Confederate flag. And I'm like, dude, you see the problem? The people on the right in Boston at this rally that I went to before, well, it was well, like a year or two ago, they were, they were holding shields unarmed. On the other side, you had Antifa with clubs and crowbars. All right. So let's be real. If you go to an event and you're like, I don't know what's going to start this. It's like, uh, dude, <laughs> you haven't been to a lot of these, have you? It's possible the right can start it for sure. It's almost entirely coming from Antifa. Not the, not the regular old progressives, but Antifa who are tolerated. Let's watch more. Wrong way. The parade was supposed to go from Copy Plaza, sneak its way through the city. And then when it got to the center of the city, there was a closed off area where uh, the organizers of the parade were going to speak. Things are getting tense. By that point, the cops who are marching along the sides of the parade are beginning to expel people. People are trying to get over the gates. And there was kind of an unmistakable smell that I, I, I kind of assumed were piss bombs, which is a common thing. And so while well, covering this sort of thing, you don't want to get doused with urine. Things definitely shifted in mood towards the end of the parade. Were- okay, he didn't point this out. It is not the right that is bringing piss and pouring it on people and throwing it at people. I would have preferred it if BuzzFeed let people know that was the case. Let's watch on. Barricades all along the way, and then they ran out of barricades. So for about 15, 20 minutes, the two groups are just intermingling, and there was complete chaos. Proud boys are chasing after anti-fascist cops are swinging wildly. They're trying to drive motorcycles through the crowd to break it up. It it was a total disaster. You really didn't know what was going to happen at any moment. There's really nothing stopping Boston from becoming the next Charlottesville in that exact moment. (laughs) Sorry. That is the most insane thing I have ever heard. What they just showed us was typical of protests. It's not good. The conflict is bad. What? Buzzfeed, dude, Ryan, I'm sorry, man. What were you thinking with this video? Okay, I was pepper sprayed by police reporting on a Boston straight pride parade. And then he literally says there was nothing stopping this from becoming Charlottesville. Are you nuts? Did you did you notice the night before Tiki Torch marches? Charlottesville was extreme. Okay, people lost their lives, man. You're talking about some fat middle aged dude walking around with a sign that says straight pride and barely anyone shows up. And your standard Antifa like we've normally seen. This is what you know what, man? He clearly has no experience covering any of this stuff. Seriously, okay? And this is what BuzzFeed is basically making a video about. First of all, when you put I was pepper sprayed, you're basically saying like, I was at a protest. Are you kidding? Like everybody gets pepper sprayed. And they also like, apparently were completely unprepared. No Maalox, no ant, no, no ant acid, no goggles, no mask. What are you doing, man? Why is BuzzFeed News sending people out here to cover this stuff with zero experience? This is what really makes me angry about this video. And then they have the nerve to be like, this could have been shots fault. Dude, people were shooting guns there, man. It's a video of a guy drawing a gun. What are you talking about? You're nuts. This is insane. BuzzFeed, this is trash. Well, I, I clicked play. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I wasn't scared. What, what you are is you're just super aware that if something goes wrong, you can't do your job very well. So once the parade organizers actually got to where they were supposed to speak, um, it was actually pretty sad. And there were probably three times as many counter protesters outside of the speaking area yelling at them. And it kind of progressed like that for about four hours. The problem was when the police wanted the counter protesters to leave. Which is exactly what happens every single time. And it's partly why people put on events like this. You're right, BuzzFeed. The problem starts when the police say, time to go home, everybody, and they don't. So he then goes on to talk about how this common phenomenon happens where the right shows up, says what they got to say, Milo dances around, twirls his baton or whatever it is he does, and they leave. And you know what? They're allowed to do that. They are legally allowed to come here, talk and say things and then leave. So long as they're not inciting violence, they can do it. The protesters then get into a fight with the cops. Let's, let's watch a little bit more. He makes another point. 
At the end of the day, all the straight pride speakers had spoken, but the counter-protester crowd outside of the speaking area hadn't left yet. They were really angry at the parade, but they were especially angry at the Boston Police Department for allowing the entire event to happen. Yes, he is correct. They are angry that people are allowed free speech in America and that the police are not there to police the speakers who are there to exercise their First Amendment rights. They're there to stop you. You are the people coming to, to, to basically attack the rights of individuals because you don't like them. So I think it's really funny when they say things like, when were your rights ever under attack? When you showed up with a crowbar and bashed skulls? Man, we're not taught because they, they view everyone through the lens of a collective group. That's the problem. Okay, if 10 people show up to say silly things, so they're allowed to do it, you know, offensive or otherwise. And yes, when you come to shut them down, you are targeting their individual rights. That's how, the, that's how English common law and our constitution and all of it works. Individual. It is better that 10 guilty persons escape than one innocent person suffer. Get it? When you're an individual person, your rights are inalienable. So if you want to speak and a large group shows up to beat you, that is quite literally the far left suppressing the rights of the individual. You're just mad that they said words you didn't agree with. So I, I do want to skip ahead a little bit because I'm not super concerned about, you know, some of the stuff he talks about. I want to get to the point where he's like, and then it happened. I was pepper sprayed. So uh, I'll just jump ahead. I don't know where I'm going. We'll just, we'll just keep playing. Tear gas and they're arresting people. And then in that moment, I'm thinking, okay, like, I've got to get out of this area as fast as possible. I don't know if I'm going to get trampled by someone who's freaked out and running from the cops. I don't know if I'm going to get arrested. I don't know if I'm going to get hit with a bike. I don't know if I'm going to get pepper sprayed again. It's a really panic-inducing moment, and, and the problem is that if you panic, you make it a lot worse. It's really hard to have all those thoughts and feelings in your head at the same time. Okay, okay, uh, I'm just, I just can't take this, man. BuzzFeed should not be allowed to send reporters to events ever again, ever again, okay? Let me tell you something. I have on my wall, I frequently point it out, it's here, you can't see it. It's a certification for hostile environment training, yes. Literally, I was sent by a company, it was very expensive, to, uh, it was by ABC, to be trained for war. And they do this for literally everyone who might be engaging in conflict uh, reporting. This doesn't mean war, it means quite literally a weatherman was at the event because there's, there's potential that you will go out in a dangerous situation. Literally, a weatherman was getting this training. I don't see how BuzzFeed can justify sending a person there who's like, it's really difficult. You might get pepper sprayed. What? Have you ever, like, you could be living in New York and go out for a can of pop and see the cops going around riling people up when they're protesting. During Occupy Wall Street, literally a guy in a suit walked out of a bodega with like an orange soda and walked into a, a, a kettle, which, which, which that's what they call it when they wrap everybody up. Dude got arrested. He was furious. You don't even gotta be a reporter to experience this stuff. To go out there and be like, I'm trying to do my job, it's very difficult, and you're completely unprepared, and you quite literally think that a small protest conflict in Boston could be the next Charlottesville. Buzzfeed. Seriously, man. I wanna stress this, okay? I don't normally like doing Buzzfeed cringe. I don't normally like criticizing people who, like, you know, are not particularly prominent public figures. I wanna make sure that's clear. I'm not trying to drag. Ryan for, you know, to be mean or disrespectful, to insult him or mock him in any way. I'm, I'm very, very critical of how people in news organizations disrespect security. They don't take it seriously. These news organizations, man, I tell you, what really triggers me about this video is I was on the ground in Ferguson, okay? I grew up on Chicago's South Side. I've experienced street conflict. So I had a natural leg up on understanding a lot of these things. And when the gunshots start going off at these riots, I look around and what do I see? A journalist from ABC News going, those, those fireworks? I've told this before. I love this story. I, I, I mean that somewhat facetiously when I'm like, dude, do you see anyone carrying fireworks? Okay, where do you think you are? A 4th of July party? Dudes are literally walking around with guns. You hear pop, pop, pop. You hit the deck. Okay, and these news organizations send out people who are like, oh, oh I got pepper sprayed. Are you nuts? I was doused with tear gas that was so intense, I ripped my sock off my shoe in Brazil and shoved it in my mouth as everything was pouring on my face and I fell to the ground. That's how intense it was. When I was in Turkey, okay, they're firing tear gas so much, you're literally like walking in a ball pit of tear gas canisters. Now I get it. Dude's not going to Brazil and Turkey, okay? I understand that. The point is, first of all, 
The event he went to, not big, not that big of a deal, okay? Doesn't need its own segment so you can talk about how you got pepper sprayed, okay? But more importantly, if you're going to send someone out, you don't send out somebody with no gear, no experience, who doesn't even know where the conflict might begin. In all of my experience, okay, the left is more likely to target journalists, destroy cameras, smack you. You can even look at all the videos. They steal phones, they smash cameras, and they post about it on Reddit. The saying is, don't smash a camera, it could pay your rent. That's what they say at these direct action meetings. If you don't go to these meetings, if you're not there for planning, if you have no idea what's going on, you have no business going down and then being like, I got pepper sprayed. There's a couple minutes left. This stuff triggers me, okay? It's, it's you know, I'm, I'm saying that somewhat jokingly, but it's a combination of, you've got all of these stories of people like, I'm gonna go vacation in, you know, Turkmenistan or something, and then it's like, lo and behold, they've gone missing. Like these young women, like, I'm going to go hike through the mountains of Morocco. Lo and behold, they've gone missing. You have people who have no business, no understanding, no situational awareness. They are soft and they're made of cookie dough. And they're being put out in these situations that aren't really that serious, to be completely honest. But it's annoying when they're then like, whoa, whoa, pepper sprayed. Okay, what else is new? Look at this. See these? These are motorcycle goggles. I don't actually, I haven't used this in a long time. But back when I was covering protests like eight years ago, you at least have some kind of protection from rocks flying at your face, from pepper spray. These are not ballistic. I don't believe that. I don't believe they're so. They're meant for motorcycles. But eventually, very quickly, we, I, I did some research. I got ballistic glasses. You wear nice, you know, padded sh shirts. You bring helmets. You don't walk around going like, oh, no. It's going to play soon, I hope. <laughs> While being completely, completely blind. <laughs> When pepper spray gets into your eyes, it's, it's not like you just see darkness. It, it, it basically stings them to the point where you can't open them anymore. But it's also on your skin, it's in your nose, and when it hits the inside of your nose, your body tries to flush it out. So you, it, it's really gross. I mean, <laughs> people don't talk about how gross it is, but it, it's like you're just coughing up like every single bit of mucus in your nasal passage. I, I don't want to give them credit for it, but it's like a really ingenious thing. Like it, it takes you down really quick. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I've said it a million times. This, this video annoyed me to no end. Like I said, I don't normally do things like this. It's a very long segment, but I'm so frustrated by, by, by Buzzfeed's like, oh, we got pepper sprayed. Let me tell you something, man. I have walked through clouds of tear gas in Ferguson. Yes, it's low grade CS smoke, not the worst in the world. Brazil was legit. That was some of the harshest stuff I've ever seen. Yes, snot pours out of your nose, but it does not shut you down unless you're an experienced, you're, unless you are an inexperienced wad of cookie dough. You cannot go down when you get hit with spray. You can't be in a conflict scenario where you're like, well, I just, I'm shut down. I can't open my eyes. No, you can open your eyes. It hurts. This is frustrating to me, man. You get pepper spray on you and it burns for a long time. Your skin's all red. You get tear gassed. It's hard to open your eyes. I have walked through clouds of gas and pepper spray with my eyes open, tears pouring out, because the last thing you want to be doing in the event like this is to be shutting down when chaos is all around you. That's how you get hurt. You should not be on the ground if you can't handle getting pepper sprayed. I get it. A direct blast in the face can shut you down relatively like a lot of people. But you need to be able to deal with that if you're going to be on the ground. Now, I, I will say it again. I know the straight pride parade is like some of the lowest tier protest. But I'll tell you this. You should not be entering a conflict between Antifa and right wing activists, whatever you want to call them, until you've actually gone to regular marches, until you've talked with police. You let them know you're going to be there. BuzzFeed should call them and say, we're going to have a reporter from BuzzFeed. He should be wearing a visibility vest or he should be wearing some kind of badge. Maybe he was. I don't know. But he should have been prepared for this. And he wasn't. And now it's like they're exaggerating about like, you know what this is to me? BuzzFeed just put out a major publication worth, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever it is they're worth, maybe nothing at this point, put out a video where they're like, we have no idea what we're doing and we do it anyway. And that's, and that's infuriating to me. There are a lot of conflict journalists who get paid way less than BuzzFeed reporters who are doing way more dangerous things who BuzzFeed could be hiring. I'm pressing play again. It just takes a while. At the end of the day, everything I own is covered in snot and orange slime and it's, it's disgusting. It's a complete complete pain in the ass. Took off my bag, I took off my camera, took off my security vest. I'm trying to get this stuff off of me as fast as possible. And that's what- Okay, I will give him absolute credit. He was wearing a security vest. Personally, I don't wear high-vis vests myself. 
Um, but I will respect someone with, with, with no experience doing that. A- absolutely. There's a lot of uh, veteran journalists who will wear a helmet and a high-vis vest. There's reasons that I don't, and it's for security reasons. Uh, for me, I, I haven't gone out in a long time, particularly because visibility at this point, it's, it's ridiculous. I get too many threats. So, uh, but, but previously, when I would go out, I wouldn't wear high-vis or a helmet. I would just wear uh, goggles and a, and, a, and a gas mask. And I would typically use the goggles as like a, just basically on my forehead for the most part, unless gas actually started coming out. But I wouldn't do it because there is another consideration in security, and it's how visible do you want to be as a target? So when you have a lot of, you know, far left types targeting journalists and you're wearing a high vis vest, they target you. So for me, it was be able to quickly move in and out of crowds, be able to blend and immediately leave the event. So if you're down at a protest and or, or, or a conflict of some sort, and you're wearing specific clothes that are labeled, pressed, you're holding all this expensive gear. Maybe it makes sense that people know you if you've got expensive gear. For me, I was using a phone. And so the, the goal there is reduce visibility. Don't stand out. And when, all, when, when chaos breaks loose, you can literally just immediately turn a corner and be a pedestrian and get out safely. Okay. There's also benefits to having like your press identification, which I keep in my wallet, in my pocket. But um, when it comes to international conflict, there are some circumstances where decreased visibility is the most important. And one of the stories that I was told by veteran conflict reporter is over in the Middle East, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, there was a journalist who hired security, wore a vest, wore a helmet, press, 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 and everything. And they were specifically targeted and shot. Whereas a, a separate journalist around the same time just put on local clothing and moved in and out with no problems because they blended in perfectly. So keep that in mind. I will say in this instance, in America, with what he was experiencing, it was right for him to do. So I will give him respect for having done it, wearing, wearing the, the, the security vest. And now I'm pressing play again. So people but are handing me things like baby shampoo, which fun pepper spray hack for anyone is a good way to get it out of your hair and get it off of your skin. That cop line's coming. And they don't know who's pressed. They don't know who's a protester. They don't know who's just some random kid there to smash up windows and break stuff. So I grab my things. I bundle it all up. It's a straight shot, and then it's a right. I crack one eye, and I just start moving. I can hear the police behind me. My vision's starting to come back. The minute I can, I just take a right onto a side street and just make my way to my hotel. The hotel I was staying in was like this old funky hotel in the middle of Boston. I think there was a wedding going on, like in the lobby. So, so previously, I guess, I guess we glossed over it when he gets to that really dramatic point where it's like, and then it happened and they pepper sprayed me. But uh, the thing about the, the shampoo is I, I, I think an antacid was pro- would probably be better. But when it comes to pepper spray, you want to get the oil off, right? So water doesn't work. He, he points this out. He said that he had pepper spray all over him and someone poured water on his head and it activates all of the pepper spray and gets it all, you know, it, it spreads it around. Not fun. But even if without the water, it's still sitting on you and it still burns. Fun, fun science fact. I once went to a hot store, uh, a hot sauce store, and I bought concentrated capsaicin and it says, do not put in contact with your skin. And my friend put it on his skin and immediately blisters up. So this stuff with or without water is really, really bad. But uh, let's, let's wrap up this video. There's about a, uh, there's about half a minute left. Obviously, when I walked in, just like still covered in orange slime, holding a body vest, uh, and I- Wait, 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 hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I thought he was talking about a high vis vest, high visibility vest. Was he literally wearing a bulletproof vest in Boston? You know what, man? Whatever at this point. <sighs> If you're going to wear body armor, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rag you for it because you could wear body armor anywhere, but you really have no idea what's going on at this point, do you? Wow. BuzzFeed. I I had a helmet strapped to my bag. Hey, you had a helmet. Good. Pretty insane. Um, But you just got to do what you got to (laughs) do. I tried not to uh, get in the elevator with anybody. I I, I felt bad. (laughs) That's the story of how I was... Pepper sprayed by police while covering Boston's straight pride parade. Uh, I am, I am, I am offended by this BuzzFeed news. I am triggered and I am, I am angered by, I mean, listen, it seems to me that BuzzFeed was probably like experimenting with a kind of new format of content. It's a story about somebody getting pepper sprayed in which literally like thousands of people are pepper sprayed all the time, you know, every week because of how many protests are happening on the country. 
Happens all the time, nobody cares. And this event happened months and months ago. And all you're really saying is like, imagine if like, I don't know, someone, someone like one of your friends came to you and they were like, dude, I got a crazy story. You know, like, the other day I stubbed my toe and you're like, okay, was that, is that the story? And you're like, yeah, it was nuts. Like, let me explain it to you. I was like walking on the street and you're like, dude, yeah, okay. People stubbed their toes. You went to, you went to an event where protesters were clashing with protesters the protesters obviously started, start, obviously started a fight with the cops. You act in the beginning like, I don't know who's going to start this. Why are you there if you don't know what's going on? I'm sorry, man. You got to understand what's happening before you go out and do these things. Now, I get it. At a certain point, point like people want to start getting involved. And to a certain degree, there will be inexperienced people there. But you don't make a video about it explaining how you had no idea what was going on. Because clearly he goes on to explain. And then the protesters refused to leave. So the police started fighting with them. And then the police pepper sprayed. And I got pepper sprayed. Dude, seriously, man? At a certain point, when you see Antifa and the far, and the far left counter protests, whatever you want to call them, clashing with cops, you pull your goggles down. Like, we, we know when the goggles come down. In fact, there are moments, you know what? <laughs> you get the point. I'm sorry. You know what? This, maybe this isn't the cringiest video to you, but as somebody who has actually done training, been on the ground, who understands how this worked, works, has, a, has actually worked in newsrooms where we plan this stuff, I am just, I am, you know, I do several videos where I talk about how the world isn't safe. And I say, like, these people think they can travel around, and do whatever they want. This video from BuzzFeed is a perfect example of the hubris of BuzzFeed news. Okay. Now, I, I will say this. Like I said, I, I think it's like they're experimenting with content. I call it scraping the bottom of the barrel as hard as possible because this is not relevant in any way. It's like, oh no, someone got pepper sprayed. Yeah. Why don't you interview any one of the activists who can tell you I was pepper, pepper sprayed 47 times in the past month? Okay, I'm exaggerating. But any one of these activists will be like, I get pepper sprayed all the time. Like, wh why? <laughs> this is why people don't like journalists, partly. So I, I, I think, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put the blame on, uh, on Ryan here. Again, I normally don't like, uh, th this would be called punching down. And, and, and I'm not a fan of this, okay? But I want to make sure that I s stress my criticism is toward BuzzFeed News. You should not be having reporters go out to these things if they don't know what's going on, if they're ill-experienced, inequipped. Like, you, you, listen, man. Imagine sending someone into a conflict and they're like, we don't know who's fighting who. It's like, we know there's like some like one group and another group. We don't know who's going to trigger it, whether the military or the left or the right. Nah, uh-uh, uh-uh, You should know about the likelihood of which side has been doing what, what their intent is, how many there are going to be. And based on any basic analysis of Boston, we knew the straight pride parade was going to be overwhelmingly Antifa. We knew based on the events that happened before, they would refuse to leave. They would, they, there would be a conflict between the police and the protesters. That was a mutual escalation. I understand people might say it's not the cops' fault. The cops got to clear the streets. They'll use their bikes. Protesters will eventually, someone will throw a water bottle. You should know all of this stuff. You shouldn't be entering saying, I don't know who's doing what. But I get it. In the event you have a new reporter and they go out and do this kind of stuff, they're not going to understand all of this. But f please, BuzzFeed, it's not appropriate to make content where, you're, where you're, the story is literally a typical event that happens at protests and you just basically explain how you have no idea what's going on. But I'm going to tell you the, the, the main reason I said, you know what? I didn't want to do this. I'm going to do it. It's when he said, this could have been Charlottesville. You know what? You almost got me swearing. I'm not going to do it. I mean, he swore, but just seriously, BuzzFeed, how dare you? Okay, man. First of all, you have no idea what's going on here. You're inequipped. You're ill-prepared. You don't, you, you don't even know who the groups are. You can't even define their politics appropriately. And then you're acting like this is in any way going to be like Charlottesville, where quite literally someone lost their life. A dude crashed a car into people and other dudes were, were you know, torching things. People were fighting like brutally with clubs and sticks. And a dude fired a gun at, you know, arguably whatever. A dude pulled out a gun on the right wing side, fired it. You want to act like Boston's like that? Just get out. Just, just delete this video. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get in trouble probably for this for some reason or another. I don't normally make contact. <laughs> Journalists. Too many, too many of these companies are scraping the bottom of the barrel of, of talent. They're hiring people who don't know what they're doing. They're thinking, yeah, we should go out and cover this. They have no experience. I'll tell you what, man. I'll, I'll let you in on a big secret. I often get a lot of people asking me like, how can I do what you do? You know, I used to do a lot of on the ground stuff. As I gained more and more followers and became more notable, it became more and more dangerous. I started getting death threats and things like that. And eventually I'm too recognizable. So I just, I, I don't do that anymore. Now we're expanding. I'm hiring other journalists who go out and they go and cover things. It's, 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 a, it's a typical trajectory for a lot of journalists. You'll notice that a lot of the people who are on TV and who are hosting, even pundits, used to be field reporters. Not all of them, but some of them. So I'll tell you this, man. You know, I, I, what, I'm, I'm a, okay, I'll make the point. A lot of people ask me, like, how do I do this? And I'll tell you this. 
When you go to a company, you go to Vice, okay? I mean, at least Vice has some experience, but you go to ABC, NBC, they will never send you out. Not every company, but a lot of these companies, will, they will never send you out if you say I have no experience. They will not give you training if you say I have no experience, okay? Before you're going out for a news organization, you need to know you need to know how these things work. BuzzFeed is ridiculously irresponsible for sending out people who have no idea what's going on, who can't even handle pepper spray. Okay, man, I've been pepper sprayed more times than I can count. I've been shot in the face with a pepper ball, exploded, okay? And I had my goggles up and the cop shot it. It, 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 it wasn't a direct hit in the face. I was behind a wall and I guess, the you know, whatever, the cop shot the wall. It was a, it was a planter, okay? It was angled. And he shot it in a way that it sprayed my face with pepper spray and plastic shrapnel. Maybe shrapnel is a bit too harsh, but bits of the, it exploded in my face. I've had people come up to me screaming in a foreign language, holding a Molotov cocktail to my head. I don't make videos about it. I don't go, here's the time somebody came up to me and held a Molotov cocktail in my face while screaming a different language. And I just said, no problem, no problem. And I walked away slowly. I don't make videos every time I get hit by a cop. Buzzfeed, this is bottom of the barrel trash. Thanks for watching this 40 minute video. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast. I'm, I, you know what, man? I did not want to make this video, but BuzzFeed, you get what you deserve. I will see you all at 4 p.m.